Jennifer Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. It's on. What is it, real low again? It's, uh, all I hear is a sizzle. Last time it was a short wire. Now we came on. All right, now it's loud. Good evening. All right. It's okay All now. right, it's loud and no sizzling. Okay. We got to get that. We had a wire, you said, last time. Yeah, and I haven't gotten with Soren. But I see the green, see how that green thing is, the line is going now? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay. All right. Brian, did you have the updated surveys? Natalie said she sent to you. Yes, I have them all in here in a PDF. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll email. Okay. Just so I can get a copy later. Yeah, yeah. I like a physical copy. Yeah. I just, they were, I was doing this late last night. And it, uh, let's see. All right. Is that line still going straight across? And yes. All that? All right. Good. I'm hoping nothing is going to upset the apple cart doing this. All right. Thank you. 5:30. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This. Good evening. Uh, can somebody type in there if there's if you're hearing an echo or something? We can turn our audio down. Huh? You can hear it good. Uh, I just got a call that says there's an echo. You're not. Are you hearing an echo now? Okay. No, I just have to turn the volume up a little bit. Okay. All right. That, it was. It, the, we need a new cord. Oh. It's. It, I had to do that. Okay. Is that we have a new cord, right? But it's just not on the It's. It's connected to an old cord. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, uh, five thirty-four. Uh, on uh, May 3rd, Tuesday, May 3rd. Uh, welcome, this is the Recreation uh, Committee uh, in the village of Walton Hills. Uh, I wrote up an agenda. Uh, first of all, I'd like to state that all committee members are here. Uh, Jennifer Allen, Fred Nielsen. Uh, we have uh, Mary Delansky here, uh, and Rob Kalman is here. Uh, first order of business, I'd like to add um, other business to uh, the agenda uh, after the Lake Club contract discussion. Uh, if I can get a motion to do that, please. Mr. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Second. Okay, vote on the motion. Um, Ms. Allen? Yes. Uh, Mr. Nielsen? Yes. And I vote yes. So three A's approved. And we'll add other business under um, the Lake Club contract. Uh, now we have approval of the Recreation Committee mi minutes. I know the, the agenda says 215. That's actually 2 1 of 22. Can I get a motion to do that? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to change the date on the minutes. The, the date on the minutes are all right. It's the date on oh, the in, agenda. In, on, on the agenda, yeah, yes. Yeah, I, when, I, when I wrote this, I looked at the two different ones. One, the date that I did it, and I should have put the actual date of the meeting. That was my error. So uh, the, the actual date of the minutes is 2-1-22. Uh, so that's a motion uh, to approve and a second. Second. Uh, seconded by um, 
Fred. Vote on the motion, uh, Ms. Allen. Yes. Mr. Nielsen. Yes. And me, that's three. Three A's approve that. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the Recreation Committee min minutes of February 8th, 2022. Can I get a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of February 8th. Uh, I'm looking, I'm uh, for you. I was second. Second. <laughs> second. Vote on the motion, Ms. Allen. Yes. Uh, Mr. Nielsen. Yes. And I vote yes. Three A's approve those. So I'll send those uh, as final meeting minutes to the village administration. Uh, the next item is an update on the recreation park department staffing and uh, the park program. I do have a, um, a uh, summary uh, letter here from uh, Natalie Buck. And a uh, second here, I get my glasses. Uh, summer uh, camp registration, the total, there's a total of 50 children registered for that, 18 residents, 17 grandchildren of residents, and 15 non-residents. Uh, no one signed up for the before or after camp care. Uh, we rehired uh, counselors from 2021. Eight counselors have been interviewed by both of us. We are satisfied with the, uh, their abilities, all contacted early last week that they are rehired to help with camp park maintenance and special events if needed. And uh, they will send the rehiring paperwork uh, that was supposed to be done last week. Was that was. done? Mary, uh, Mary uh, Talansky said that it was. Uh, new counselor applicants, we did have four applicants. Um, now this is, uh, uh, Mary, if you can correct me, this says the Four were interviewed by both. Some. Yes, these are these are just counselors. Oh, the counselors. Yes. Okay. So four uh, four new counselors were interviewed. Some counselors have a uh, uh, will need all four since some counselors are not able to work five days a week. Some counselors have vacation weeks during camp. Uh, they have all been contacted early, early last week that they are hired for the same. And as soon as Angela sends uh, the paperwork that uh, they need from them, they'll send it out. Is that the... That was also sent out. Thank you. Uh, the new youth program leader positions, uh, the last I heard was there was one hired. One hired, yes. And uh, are we in the process of interviewing any more? We interviewed two, and then we had two that were supposed to come in and they did not show. And then we'll have potentially two more interviews next week. Okay. Uh, can you state the, uh, uh, like, uh, what this person is that you did hire, what the qualifications were, and what, what they did? <coughs> are they a teacher? He's a teacher. He works in the Cleveland Municipal School District. Okay. Um, I think he's been teaching for, like, three years now. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um... So that's what the, where the leader positions are at. Uh, the Lake Club contract, uh, they would like to change the time frame that the camp swims at the lake. Uh, currently in the contract, it's 1.30 to 3.30. They would like it changed from one o'clock to three o'clock. That would give uh, the village uh, more time to get the campers back to the park before pickup. Uh, it takes multiple trips to get back and forth to the park with the bus buses. Uh, Natalie states that she talked with Ms. McCormick from the lake, uh, said that parents picked up their children at the lake last year and she does not want this to happen again this year and we agree. I will address that. This is not allowed in the parent letter, but if time is changed, uh, this should eliminate this problem. Uh, we do not want to be rushed with pickup uh, procedures, and each child needs to go home with just people listed on the pickup form. More important this year than the past two years that I've been here. IDs will be required at pickup, which takes more time. So that was uh, Natalie Buck's uh, report to the committee. Do you have uh, the committee members have any questions on that report or any? Questions based on that.
for Mary? No. Okay. Okay, the next uh, item on the agenda is the uh, Lake Club contract. We did have uh, one reading, and uh, that's scheduled to be read right again. The uh, this council meeting coming up third Tuesday of the month. Um, I had contacted uh, Sean McCormick, Miss McCormick from the lake, uh, last week uh, because we had discussions. Uh, started discussions uh, of you know, finances and things like that with, with uh, budgets and um, uh, we were looking at ways of uh, increasing the recreational opportunities for uh, our residents and that's why Mr. Kalman is here he gave me some really good information on uh, various costs and things like that, what it's going to take to get things accomplished. And um, uh, looking at the uh, budget, uh, with the rec budget compared to the overall budget, we thought a conversation uh, w would uh, be started with the lake. Uh, the current contract is for $20,000. Um, and we wanted to start there with the lake just uh, to see what their uh, financial needs were um, uh, going forward for this year. Um, and uh, so I contacted Sean McCormick and uh, had a little conversation with, with her. And uh, uh, I thought it would be best to have these conversations out in the open as opposed to uh, you know, behind closed doors. I don't want anybody accusing anybody of, uh, you know, from the lake or from Moss of, of talking behind closed doors uh, about finances for the village um, when it comes to this. And uh, this is just a starting point. Um, uh, as I said, uh, Mr. Kalman came up with uh, various costs, um, costs for different scenarios. I, I put it all together. Uh, which uh, we have here. Uh, I, I gave you guys a copy of it, and uh, uh, I think I'll be able to put it up here also, so everybody can see those various scenarios. And they're not we're not pinned down to those scenarios either. Uh, uh, whatever uh, works for the village, uh, we can do. So that's where uh, it starts uh, for this conversation. First of all, the easy part, I guess, would be, uh, does anybody from the lake, any, uh, 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 Sean, I don't know if you want to speak for the lake, uh, uh, about the time between 1.30 and 3.30, does that matter to you uh, for pickup, or for uh, time for the parkers from one to three? We, um, I'm in the process of touching base with the lifeguards that we've hired. Okay. We had five, we're down to four. Amazon took my fifth one, but um, I'm pretty positive he's going to be back. Okay. Um, but anyway, with the four remaining, I'm collecting right now all of their summer schedules, their, their holiday schedules, um, extracurriculars, uh -huh. with that in mind that um, the village has asked to bump it 30 minutes earlier on both the beginning and the ending um, to make sure that it works. So I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. I did briefly mention that in some email correspondence to my trustees. Uh -huh. um, they, there, there wasn't any objection, so I'm just working to, so to get yeah, I'm working to make that happen. I'm actively collecting all of these schedules from all of my lifeguards, so. Um, but I can see where the importance is and where the additional 30 minutes of time is needed, mm -hmm. given that, I mean, at least as per our last conversation, there's only one vehicle running back and forth, and that takes time. Yeah. So I get the logistics. Yeah. So, uh, but my goal is to work to make that happen. Uh, okay, well, thank you. Does anybody have a question back there? I didn't see a hand raised. Okay. 
Um, Jennifer, do you want to? Uh, hey, Rob, this thing that I gave you, can you make a bunch of copies for the audience? I think I thought I had it here, um, or somebody. I thought I had it here to put up on the uh, board, and I didn't. I didn't send it to myself to do that. Like a dozen. I was say twelve. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. I appreciate it. I know counting that high is hard for you. So. <laughs> so Rob, uh, these uh, numbers. Did you get a chance to look at this piece of paper? Yes. Are these numbers pretty accurate? I mean, from the price we, we talked about. From, yeah, the, yeah, so mm -hmm. I didn't go off into the weeds when I transposed right. these. You didn't see anything a mess. Okay. Um, uh, as we uh, stated we, uh, before, we did a uh, survey of the residents. Um, and uh, I might as well go into that. Does anybody have any issues with me going into that right now as to what? Um, and then we can base our conversations on that, and that might make more sense with this. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, three pages of this website results and um, uh, written paper results. Um, and it's a little bit convoluted if you read these. Um, uh, the last page, I took everything and I ranked them from highest to lowest. Um, uh, written survey responses, we did receive 64. Website was 22 for a total of 86. Um, and as you can see, this, these are all the websites. So 22 responses for the website. Uh, baseball, that mi it does, it's not a minus number, it's a dash, that dash line goes <laughs> to the number. Um, baseball, we had five responses here. Basketball, uh, 12, bingo night, five, card games, four, uh, crafts, one, dances, two, father-daughter dance, zero. Karaoke, one, morning coffee and tea, uh, and for these that have dot, dot, dots, I, I wrote the whole thing out with morning coffee and tea with pastry and friends. Okay, so you can see we did have uh, one on the website that, uh, that responded. Movies, three, music, five, pickleball, six, tennis, six, basketball, court, two. Uh, we had, now these are all others down here, replace. Place a racetrack with a basketball court will be more useful to the residents of this village. Uh, full basketball court instead of race cars. Need a court, use the racetrack. Make basketball court from our car court. Put a basketball court where the racetrack is. Very little use by racetrack. Basketball court would bring out more adults and youngsters to participate and invite adults and, and that's where it ended. So I don't know what the end of there thing was and that is all down here these however though um, we do have um, radio control cars one put a bass uh, line dancing was one here uh, radio control cars was one and radio control car racing was one so I on my last page I lumped those uh, in with uh, all of the, uh, the uh, uh, there was also one other that was kids RC, uh, teach kids to RC. So I did lump that into the final RC uh, number. Uh, dog park was one. Uh, some more um, uh, bus trips. Amish country, we had five. Lunch, dinner, at a restaurant, we had eight. Museum, six. Musical concerts, four. 
Plays at Playhouse is eight. Uh, shopping trip, six. Uh, sporting events is one. Wineries was 13. That was, that's a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog park was the one. Uh, programs, we have uh, after school drop off was the one. Bowling league was two. Commu computer or smartphone phone was five. CPR first aid classes was seven. Date night drop off, babysitting four. Exercise classes seven. Dance classes six. Self defense classes 17. Uh, walking program seven. Dog park is one. Kid self defense one. So I lumped that into the uh, final number for the self-defense. Um, dog park, please, that's one dog park group in a safe, let's see what that says. Dog park, uh, please make a dog park. I have several dogs and do not like walking on the streets with traffic. Dog park, please, very much needed in this village, no sidewalks. Dog walking group in a safe place. Any classes where residents see the center is a great place to learn and meet neighbors. That uh, was another. Um, so uh, special events, I don't know why Google did it in a pie chart, but we have uh, welcome new friends, meet and greet is nine, family day, uh, day at the park was four, block party, event center is four, community concerts in the park, two, fresh food market, uh, one. So this was what the activity survey looked like. And this was, these were the numbers off of uh, the mailed in or dropped off in activity surveys. So what I did down here, and this by the way, anybody can just email me and I'll send you this whole thing if you'd like to take a look at it. Um, what I did was I, um, put them all together and rank, ranked them all. So activities, we had 40 responses for basketball, 30 for bingo, 23 for music, 23 for pickleball, 21 radio control cars, 21 movies, 20 tennis, 17 morning coffee and pastry with friends, 14 baseball game, 12 uh, for card games, 12 for dog park, 11 for crafts, I don't know why Natalie uh, spread that eight for baseball, baseball game. I, uh, uh, one was just baseball and one was like to be like a baseball game like we do once a year, like at community days we used to do with the, uh, uh, yeah, the babes and things like that. Um, uh, but that was eight. Adult dances, couple dances, five. Father, father daughter, mother, son dance, four. Karaoke, four. Pool, billiards, two. Uh, bus trips, 37 for wineries, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's probably going to be on the agenda. Uh, lunch, dinner at a restaurant, 31. Plays at Playhouse Square, 30. Museums, 28. Amish Country, 25. Musical Concerts, 21. Shopping trips, 17. Sporting events, 9. Casinos, 2. Look at Autumn Leaves, uh, 1. Plays at Community Theaters, 11. And Metro Parks, Crap Shows. Uh, we got 60 uh, for dancing, line dancing, exercise uh, dancing, things like that. 45 uh, self-defense classes, that was uh, interesting. 22 for first aid CPR, 21 for walking program. Uh, computer smartphone classes, date night drop off 15, bowling league 11, after school drop off eight. Uh, then it goes down to two and one. Painting, uh, finance classes, whoop, I put that in the wrong spot. Ph photography classes was two. And then we had uh, one with shuffleboard, local brownies, potluck, recipe sharing, chess, kids club, mulch drop off for residents, archery. Kids music classes, music jams, monthly resident dinners, and lecture series with the library. So we got some good uh, others, uh, I think. Uh, that the rec department can uh, look into and help us uh, with coordinating programs. But as this pertains to T.G. Young Park and um, 
creating uh, activities that residents would like to see at the park. Um, we have costs that are associated with that. Um, and I believe everybody's got this. I apologize for the people on the uh, uh, internet that can't, I uh, did not pull this up. So um, we had discussed, uh, I had discussed with Mr. Kalman um, uh, the resurfacing of the current tennis courts. We looked at that, at, uh, Mr. Nielsen uh, walked that court also. And the court, other than being uh, cracked, it's not heaved like the um, east side of where the, uh, the lower east side pavement area. Um, I'll show you the, uh, I think this is it. No, this is a picture of that, uh, of the two tennis courts. And you can see that they're cracked, um, but they're really not heaved at all. Um, we do have, these are the, pole, the posts for the nets, and you can see it's very much cracked down there. Those would have to be dealt with. Um, that's my uh, dirty tennis shoe along that crack, just to give you some, um, some sense of how big that crack is. Um, even though it's not heaved, I wouldn't play tennis on it because it would, uh, I'd be afraid of, people were afraid of twisting their ankles and things like that. So I wouldn't play in the uh, current, um, current state. This area here, which is looking south, that's the east side. This area is all heaved, right, Rob? Yes. It's heaved up. Um, so it would be really unplayable at this point if we put something in there, uh, other than a batting cage, because you're not really running around. Um, uh, for those of you who haven't been to the park lately, in the last couple weeks or so, this is what the park looked like yesterday. That's the old uh, uh, basketball court. It's gone and there's grass planted there. Um, so the service department did a great job of taking that out and uh, uh, plant, uh, putting the dirt in. And yesterday we did have, as I was there with Mr. Kalman, we did have the load of uh, dirt for the baseball fields that came in. Uh, so that's what that looks like. Let me see. So here's our uh, current area right now uh, that we have. And as you can see, this side is uh, the currently where it's, it's marked here for the RC racing. Uh, here is the, bas or the uh, baseball cage and then so directly to the south of that is really nothing right now. It's just the entrance. Uh, but there, how far would you say that was? About 60 feet long or so? I think the whole thing's about 120 feet. It's 64 feet right in here. And it's about 60 feet by another 60, 64 feet, something like that. That's currently, uh, and that's uh, asphalt's in the same shape. Uh, so, uh, Rob and I had discussions of um, resurfacing uh, and painting the two tennis courts uh, up there and putting, painting the uh, tennis courts and pickleball courts with new nets, at, <coughs> excuse me, and posts. Uh, to resurface the tennis court area, which is 12,800 square feet, including uh, one and a half, uh, ODAT 448 Type 1, whatever that, that is, I'll leave that to Rob, that's $25,000, that's the cost he came up. Uh, to, uh, for the posts, talking 970, sleeves 166, paint for the two courts, and that's not just the lines, that's the interior paint of the courts themselves to demarcate those, that's $8,000, and then miscellaneous supplies, 
round figures, uh, 250 bucks. I put that 250 bucks on everything. Because, uh, so uh, grand total to resurface, uh, to do those courts with a resurface is $34,386. Another option that uh, Rob came up with uh, that we talked about was an acrylic resurface. As I said, the upper tennis court isn't heaved. It's, it's uh, just cracked. So there's an acrylic resurfacer that he can put on that to make it smooth. Um, and then just stripe, which would be black. Um, the other option is white, and, and I don't think we want white up there. It would just add, uh, look horrible within a month or so. Um, I wish it was a more neutral color so it didn't bake in the sun, you know. But, uh, uh, and maybe there is, maybe we can do some research on that. But that's $3,152. Uh, posts, posts and sleeves are the same. Striping, uh, now this is not painting, this is just striping the two quarts uh, would be $700. And by the way, all the, these costs are all in-house. Rob and the service department doing 100% of the work. Um, so there's costs to that also, you know, there uh, time costs and things like that that they aren't doing other things. Uh, so our second option for the upper court area is $5,238. Uh, then we move to the lower paved area where the current uh, uh, racetrack is now. Um, to resurface the batting cage area, which is 5,400 square feet, that's $10,530. Uh, Craxiel, uh, the current racetrack area is 1,200. Uh, we had a little bit of discussion on whether or not that's necessary or not at this time. Um, uh, Pardon me, not necessary. No? Okay. <clears throat> um, stripe and paint pickleball court, and this is where we initially started off. We're going to go from high to low. Start, uh, paint uh, the pickleball court, that paint is expensive. That's $10,000. Stripe a half court, $750. Mobile pickleball net, $660. And the basketball hoop 2300 plus miscellaneous supplies. So we're talking $25,690. <clears throat> so uh, another option is not painting anything, just doing some striping. Crack seal, uh, I did leave that in there, the $1,200. Uh, stripe two pickleball courts, $800. Stripe a half court basketball, $750. Uh, with the mobile nets and the mobile hoop, we're talking $59.60. The last option I have here, and which isn't our last option, it's just the last option I have on the page, is uh, uh, again, crack seal for current area, whether that needs that. Um, stripe half court, basketball court, $750. The mobile basketball hoops, $2,300. And miscellaneous supplies, so we're talking $4,500 uh, for that. And uh, if we were uh, to do any of these options with the uh, uh, striping uh, in that area, I would highly recommend getting uh, a different color stripe, uh, keeping that, you know, the uh, RC track so people can use that uh, and, and having some sort of if we put a half court basketball court in there somewhere on one end or the other, um, having it a different color so it doesn't infringe on uh, people uh, using that area as far as visually. Um, I would hate, just me sitting here, I would hate to spend the money on striping, uh, for example, two pickleball courts in the area. It is, although it's 800 bucks, it's still $800. And um, then we get a grant to do the upper and we've kind of wasted $800. Uh, 
Um, I don't want to make it too uh, multi-use also. Um, you know, the area is large enough, uh, but as we sit here and think about spending our money wisely, uh, what the best course of action would be. If we were to do the upper court, um, the upper tennis court with the $5,238 option, which is uh, acrylic and um, marking of the two uh, courts, if we did happen to get that uh, grant that we put in for, we can always use that money to repave this eastern area, of that mm -hmm. whole that whole thing, and then possibly move uh, this first area here, or maybe you know put something more useful in there rather than open space, and then have your have your uh, you know baseball things in there. Um, that's just where I sit right now, where my thought process is, but. With these two options, we're talking uh, $10,000 in cost. Um, and I had Angela. Angela is very busy with the, uh, the auditors are here for, uh, they're reviewing our documents for the um, uh, 2020 and 2021 audit. So that'll cover those two years. And they were in here all day today uh, as I was trying to set up. Um, uh, so she's busy working with them. Um, I asked her to see if we were under budget in some areas, um, if we could get a few thousand dollars from one area or whatever. And uh, she did give me the, you know, the numbers as of March of this year but there's no indication of really where we are right now. Um, we have, um, because some of our rec programs here, you know, we don't spend the money until summer. So, you know, we, it's unfair to say, well, we only spent $1,200 so far out of a, uh, you know, $2,000 or a, a $4,400 budget, you know, that's money that's going to be spent later. Um, so that's where it dovetails into the conversation with the lake, um, uh, how much uh, they, how much funding they currently have of their own. Do they need the entire $20,000 for this year? Um, and if, if that would make it um, easier on us budget-wise, uh, because we're trying, again, we're trying to figure out within a work within our budget to, to uh, have the uh, most recreational opportunities for our residents as we can, and that's what our job is. Uh, and the lake is a recreational thing that we do uh, help provide um, uh, at a reasonable cost. So I don't know if anybody has anything to say from the lake um, as opposed to uh, uh, Sean was going to talk with some of the representatives and see where they stood as far as uh, and see where, where your finances were and things like that. So. We did, we, we have spoken, um, not at length, mm -hmm. but I know there's a lot of numbers on this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just kind of address the, what seems to be a, like a general number or a general um, inquiry. So I prepared a statement and then if there's any other people that like to kind of piggyback, um, please feel free. Mm -hmm. But uh, in reference to your inquiry, to the lake uh, to uh, accept a reduction in the 2022 contract for our operating season. As president of the lake club and a representative of the board of the trustees, the lake respectfully declines. Mm -hmm. 
The lake has and continues to serve the Walton Hills community as an affordable and significant multi-generational resource for recreation. With over 500 members and thousands of visitors throughout our season, its value to the community is unmatched. Event planning by trustees is a nonstop cooperative movement that is driven not only to pull together our members, but also to reach out to all of Walton Hills residents. Yes, we have our contract events, but we don't stop there. Uh, one example is that uh, of our Easter event, initiated at the start of the pandemic, we plan on greeting each new spring with this family-oriented gathering. At this point in the calendar year, the lake is operationally and financially committed to a number of tasks. Uh, the the $15,000 curly slide restoration is just to name our biggest for this year alone. Other necessary tasks to be completed prior to opening include, but are definitely not limited, to repair of the silver slide, new beach sand, lake wall cleaning and patching, uh, lots of paint for not only the lake walls but for lake structures, um, and play equipment inspection and painting. Um, we also have to address a couple grills that need new metal, new welding, um, new surfaces. Uh, we've had one work day as we get into it, that list will grow. Um, in addition, 2022 will bring some additional operating costs that I wasn't, although I did anticipate an increase, did not increase this, would, didn't expect quite this. Um, our liquid chlorine, the cost of the product alone, not even talking about delivery, is going to increase 76%. So in the event that we stay at last year's exact same quantity, we're looking at just for product alone, an additional $3,300. Grass cutting costs have also increased. Um, the village knows very well, Sharpscapes does the lake as well. Um, and then we're looking at an increase in labor, in payroll, just from last year alone. Um, and right now I can't even quote you the price of granular chlorine because there's a nationwide shortage. I'm hoping to get what we got for last year. Um, to close, the lake would very much like to proceed with the uh, 2022 contract as it was budgeted and read to council in April. Lake trustees respectfully request that other avenues of potential funding uh, be further explored. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Does anybody, any comments from uh, committee members? Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm looking at the uh, rec expense budget, and Rob, I don't know if you could answer this for me. Do you have a copy of it? No. So that doesn't, that's I'll not. I'll say no, I don't. Oh. Okay, do we have, a, did we have I, an extra yeah. one up here? Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought you had a copy of this, Rob. No, it's I'm just a snapshot of the rec budget. So the third line from the bottom, it says land and buildings. And it's showing that we budgeted 11,000 and we actually used 16,000. Um, and we're budgeted 15,000 this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being the head of the service department and the guy that handles everything, do you anticipate that we would need that full 15,000 again this year if we spent 16,000 last year? I, I'm not prepared to answer that because I don't know what gets what put, went into there. Into I understand. I understand. Uh, I just thought that maybe you would have an idea, but I do understand. Right. I um, I know that it came up in some earlier kind of conversations, uh, you know, something about the fence going up or whatever. But I don't know how that's allocated truly because I. I would assume, I, I, I assume that capital improvements don't hit a budget line item, mm -hmm. that they're held out and separately. So I, I, I honestly can't speak to that. I don't know what that money was allocated for. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to find out what exactly went into that line item. Mm -hmm. Because again, if we spent just over 16,000 last year, and the year before that was only 6,000, do we really need to anticipate 15,000 for land and buildings? Mm 
Okay, good question. So, so that would be something I would like an answer before making any decisions. Mm-hmm. Fred, do you have anything? I'm sorry, no, okay, go ahead. No, no, that's all right. Fred, do you have anything? Yeah, well, just that uh, this budget was uh, put together uh, before I was on council. And uh, I'm looking at the year before, we already have it here marked. Uh, and Rob said he doesn't have an answer at this time, but it's definitely something we can look at, you know, uh, and come up with something, figures. I think it probably actually needs to be addressed through Angela, because I don't know if Mary or Natalie um, allocates mm -hmm. in those areas of her budget. So I think Angela would probably be the one that to best answer that. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, I mean, we did uh, have a grant, correct, for a new swing slide, something to that effect. It was a grant. It's going towards new tables. Okay. I thought there was something with a piece of equipment for ADA. Tables. Oh, okay. Now, well, we got five thousand dollars instead of matching, you know, five or ten thousand, like you know, putting our money in the game. Mm -hmm. The whole grant was five. You can't really purchase handicap play equipment for five grand. So when Natalie and I spoke, I recommended, you know what, the ADA tables are in bad shape. Why don't we replace at least a couple? Okay. So that's, that's how we spent that. Okay. Um, you know, at, at the bare minimum uh, of uh, $4,500 to, uh, I, I, I would, first of all, I would agree with uh, Ms. Allen about seeing uh, from Angela where these funds are. Um, and if we really need to allocate the 15,000 for this year, the very least, um, uh, I really do think that um, putting in uh, just a striping for a half court basketball court to help out our residents. Uh, again, we got 40 of them um, that, uh, out of here that, and, and there's new kids in this village and things like that, so uh, they need something to do. Mr. Chairman, uh, go ahead. I'm uh, just judging by the chart that you showed up there, it looks like basketball is like the number one, right? The number right. one request That's for basketball courts so. and the pickleball and, and tennis, you know, that costs money. So if we have to wait on that for next year. Uh, to see, you know, if we did get the grant or, you know, I can put in for another grant if it comes around uh, and just do the bare minimum. At least residents would see we're doing something. Um, uh, and, of course, all these other things with the bus trips and the things up at the event center, that's going to be handled by Natalie. And, uh, uh, Fred, you have some, not to go off this subject on a tangent, but, uh, you were speaking with the, you want to speak to the line dancing? Yeah, we had, I talked to Mary about this. Um, we have a woman that's interested in giving line dancing lessons, and we had a lot of people that were interested in it. Um, we weren't sure how to go about it. So because uh, of our new uh, policy that we don't rent the, uh, our building to outside people. Um, we wanted to kind of run it as like they do the uh, the yoga. Yes. And and I thought if we could run it that same way, I think we can. 
think we can make it fly that way. Mm -hmm. Where the residents would pay directly the to instructor. The way that they do with the yoga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman, I had a couple of comments here, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, Michelle Velk said, this year specifically, the lake has taken on the responsibility of hosting events that the rec department had promised but did not execute, i.e. Easter was canceled because of COVID per Natalie. Well, doesn't uh, Lake always do Easter? Huh? We yeah. started uh, 2020. 2020. No, 19. It was re resurrected. It was done 20 years ago. Joe DeVito and myself went away. And when the virus was not around, we had over. Yeah, oh yeah, it was a big event. And it was a big, so we continued it and changed it. We did the parking lot drive through things, so it's, but it's, it's voluntary by the way to do that. So we had another oh, yeah. comment from a Ms. Stacy Sibarek. It says, was the Easter event open to all village residents or just lake members? And Mrs. Belk replied, all village residents. And over the past two years, we've gotten creative to make sure that all of the community has been able to enjoy the Easter events during the pandemic. A um, question for the lake, we, the village, uh, one, it wasn't, it was open last year, I'm getting my years, yeah. 2020 it was not open to the residents. Right. Correct. It wasn't um, open to anybody. Wasn't open to anybody. Now what did, um, could you speak to the uh, uh, things that I know that you did some things during that year, although it wasn't open, um, because the village, the village did give money to the lake that year. Correct? Am I For correct? No. 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 We did okay, we, we did not. I stand corrected. No. And we didn't even receive any open money for 2021. Okay, it but you did uh, make improvements in 2020 to the lake. I thought you did some We made improvements in 2020 to the effect of the fluorination system. Yeah, that's right. We did uh, additional ground work, okay. grill work, and then from there I had to look. And then also in 2021 we continued. We added underground pipe work too. Yeah, that was 2021 and then the skinny thing. Yes. Okay. 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 Are there any more questions? Not there? right now. Not right now. Um, but Mr. Chairman, I have a question. On the lower court, um, we are planning on keeping the, bas uh, the batting cages, correct? Yeah, they're used, uh, uh, you know, now we have some kids coming into the village. Currently, we don't, the village does not have their own baseball team. It's just uh, rented uh, <coughs> an outside source, but they do. Fred, do you know the days that they use that at all? No, he, um, it's, it's pretty much, he sets it up, you know, by, for his people through the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but I know he wants to give us a new uh, batting machine, uh, a, new, a new machine that'll sit out, it'll sit outside. All weather. All weather, yeah, he's got a cover for it and everything and he's gonna set that up. So that'll be, you know, I would assume it would be also for village use since mm -hmm. it's on our, you know, Property. in our cages. So, mm -hmm. but we won't have to set up uh, two cages like we've had in the past. We just set up one cage. So, I think you looked at that, Rob, already. Yeah, no, we're getting close to setting a cage up. Right? I mean, we looked at. Yeah, how much space that, we need? That fabric net is is nothing but a pain. Yeah, I know. Yeah, um, and, 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 and you know. Really, when we talk about making improvements to existing facilities, I, I bring the batting cage back the way it was, the way it originally was, it was a cage. It was a, it was a chain link fence. Yeah. So that fabric, I guess, the, well, we buy new fabric every couple of years, yeah. it's a pain to put up, it's a pain to store, it's a pain to take down. The one time we left it up, got wet snow, and ruined the fence, so it's like, it's, it's, I know. It's if we're going to legit have a batting cage, and, I mean, and I know we didn't talk about this, mm -hmm. this is something, I was, something else I was dealing with today, if there's going to be one, I mean, at lower area set up for three, yeah. you, you really need one. Yeah, you could make it just a you wire, know, and, wire and cage. Probably, we should probably run some numbers on that, for all the cases, if that's what, mm -hmm. ever, you know, that's what's wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, but put a hard cage under a like 
we had, like we had use. before. Yeah. yeah. Well, they took that out. They took that out and they took the field out. Right. So that was, you know, that wasn't on. Well, yeah, we can run numbers on that if we get that grant. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Could we, um, before making a decision, then also look at that area and see how it could possibly be split up between one batting cage, at least half of a basketball court, and maybe a smaller racetrack so no one would have to interfere on anybody else? Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility that we could? Everything's a possibility. You know, because yeah. I understand. We've looked, we've walked down, we've looked at both facilities, both areas. But now we're talking about one batting I, I understand, but we've, we're open to anything. I mean, we're, we're yeah, I mean, I mean, we're trying to, you know, you have a survey. We're trying to accommodate as many sure. people as possible. Yeah, no, I understand. That's what I'm saying. And people say they want tennis and they want pickleball and they want basketball. Yeah. And the money just isn't there. No, completely so, agreed. I think we need I some mean, answers first on this budget yeah. and to get some other numbers together, like if Rob can for making a chain link cage mm -hmm. um, and well, that's that's the way to go I mean, oh no yeah doubt that's good that. I mean, money we, though but we talked about that years ago I had that's a whole different that's a lot of good money yeah residential chain link fence is about five hundred dollars for ten feet something like that really yeah really yeah <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I know. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I guess it, you got to weigh out the value. I oh, mean, absolutely. Depending on how many, you, I know, you keep, I know you, we have more young kids here. You got a survey. Baseball wasn't that hot. I mean, right. just, you know, so, you know. It, we it go, really hasn't been we, for years. Can we, can we go one more year with it? Can we get by with it? Oh, we're going to get by. Oh, okay, yeah. well, yeah. Yeah. well, then there we are. So we one, one more year. To that that, that so one's cool. that one's solved. So yeah. All right. Well, um, so moving forward, we'll check with uh, Angela and uh, see where these numbers are lying right now. If we're going to do something. I'd, I'd like to do it sooner rather than later because it's. Summer. I'd like to have something for the summer for people to do if, if we can do that. I think that's. Uh, go ahead. I got three hands up. Oh. Fight over. Go ahead, can, go ahead, go ahead. Can, can you please come up there because of the recording? Yeah. State your name, please, for the Kathy Barnes, um, resident of Walton Hills, has had a couple questions around the budget you guys were looking into um, for the building and, and whatnot. You were going to see what was appropriated to that, but also, can there can the budget for the recreation be looked in as well? And, and do they have a budget estimated? Oh, yeah. For what they're using their funds for? Because absolutely, here you want that, to. That's it. what we were talking about. Was okay. the recreation oh, department's budget? Okay, that's yeah. fine. Because I just with the lake club, we know what we have to do. And that money needs, they need that money to, mm -hmm. to provide that service to the village. It's something that I, I cherish. I moved into the village and didn't even know it was there. Mm -hmm. I got a bonus. So yeah. I'd like to see that stay like that. Okay. Uh, is, is it NES or NS? NES. NES. And another question, I mean, I think doing the multi-purpose you know, purpose court for basketball, pickleball, tennis is needed. But if we're going to be making improvements up at that park, are the restrooms going to be available to the people that use that park? Oh, we're going to talk about that. Okay. They, they always are. It's, it's, and that'll be, uh, except for the winter months, because they're not heated. So okay. I, I was of the understanding that they weren't always open, so it didn't. Well, yeah, we'll talk That was about an that issue for people that are going to the yeah. park. If you're going to put more things for them to do, sure. that should be available to everyone there. Sure. And one more question. Um, would the village consider reaching out to local companies to provide that resurfacing or whatnot at a discount? Is that something you would entertain? Sure. We, we, we always entertain things like that if we, we can get asphalt uh, okay. cheaper That's or donated or whatever. Yeah, we, okay. we, we do. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, we're looking for all options. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. 
Um, Ms. Carla Whedon said the online viewers cannot see the presentation on screen. It's also difficult to hear the discussion with the exception of Ms. McCormick. So I think we need to speak well, a little I closer. I think that everybody that needs to come up here, uh, if you're going to talk to your guys' mic. Uh, I don't. I think they can. I don't know me. how to do that. <laughs> I can turn them up, but it's not. A, it's not a matter of turning it up. I think it's a matter of discussing from here, from down there. You got to come up here. Ask Miss Whedon, Mrs. Whedon, if that's the case. If she can hear us on that. Ask if she can hear council members. <laughs> don't come on up. To them. <coughs> Yeah, this one's on. Uh, Tom Nowicki, uh, I won, I'm really wasn't certain exactly what this, how this meeting was going to go. If this was going to be a discussion on the lake money and all that, and I'm learning more. I'm just going to say that I see that that was two and a half percent of the village population that did that survey. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. I mean, you wish everybody would get involved, but they don't, and um, I don't see as well as I used to. Um, so I've been uh, with the village, <laughs> these work good, Don laughed at these granny glasses, they work for me. Um, so I've been 40 years now, Walton Hills, and uh, volunteering quite a few of those years, and I think this is way too late in the game to get involved with anything having to do with the lake money. We do a budget in the beginning of the year just like Angela does the budget in the beginning of the year. Rob has his wish list, the trucks. We all know that the, the service department does. To me, that is the department that everybody is affected by. Recreation also. But, you know, I know his trucks are probably the oldest of anything and of our police cars and all that, and I won't even bother getting into that. But the idea that to change this game with the lake at this time is something that is not planned out, um, I think, uh, the way it should be if there's going to be changes in the game as of recreation for the T.G. Young Park and how to change the courts that need things that they think you want to do and get fixed in pickleball. You know what? I've never even seen a pickleball court. It sounds like fun, but I, I don't even know how big. You know, I mean, the court is and all that. Is part of the event center where across from the library, can that be a pickleball court? What do we use that for? What do we use that for? The, when you walk in the left side, across from the library, that used to be the church part. What is that? I mean, what is it used for? Well, no, everybody knows what the event center looks like. Well, I know. You have the banquet hall on the right, and then you've got this big alleyway used to be a church on the left side. What do we You're use that for? Room. Yeah, what is that used for? It's used for rentals. We use it for events. Oh, the mo oh you're talking about the room itself. I yeah, the room the itself. Was out yeah. In the is that a pickleball yeah, court size? Park. I don't understand. I have no idea. Play pickleball indoors. Why not? No, there's a bunch of windows. <laughs> you should play basketball indoors. <laughs> play, do everything indoors. <laughs> there's a long winter around here. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I just, just popped in my head, and, and that's. Okay. 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 It's a, it's a smaller court, so older people can play it without having to run not run court. as much and younger, okay. younger people can play it so can that um, be a badminton court indoors for anybody seniors don't have to run too much for badminton i mean does well, probably yeah, i, mean, I, I mean you could probably play badminton indoors at the event center sure i have uh i have you know? uh and that's a great idea actually I've yeah uh, cost sheets for some uh, mobile netting, things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. so, and they're not, mm -hmm. you know, 350 bucks. Something okay. Like so, <clears throat> talk into your microphone, please. Talk into my microphone? Yes. Okay. So, um, um, like, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm bouncing around, I understand that. I didn't know how, how close you were into this, but the idea of changing the game right now, 
Um, and I'll be honest, it started with uh, Denny and you kind of guys going back and no, forth. No, I'm going to, I don't well, want to interject that. I took over the rec department January, uh, the middle of January. And that's when it started. It was the middle of January because I'm the chair of the rec committee and I wanted to do what my job was supposed to do is increase or, or help the residents with their recreational things. No, that, now, that's if correct. A, if a resident yeah. took that I want to infringe on, on their spot the wrong way, if people take it that way, I can't help that. No, I agree with you. And, and you are correct in everything you say. The friction started when the race car uh, track might be turned into a pickleboard, a pickleball. That's where I think the friction and the ideas, there was never mention of taking money from the lake until the argument back and forth between, I mean, there we can leave that where it's at. That, yeah, it was, I kept saying, and that meeting is recorded. I uh -huh. kept saying that this is not about taking race cars away from Walton Hills. No, because Everybody you said, right, it can welcome. still, I listened to that one. Okay, yeah, so you said it could still be used for the yeah, racetrack. So yes, you're correct. Contention. It's not on no, the, no, no, you're, you're correct. But I see, this, it, it's, it's like, it, here you have January budget. You're going to figure out if you want to buy a new car because you got the money in the bank or you don't. This is May. If these things were going to go on, it should have, we're too far into the year to, to change this. We still haven't figured out what we really want, which court we want to do, how do we want to fix it. It's May already. I'm sorry, but we lost two years to the virus. Everybody really mm -hmm. did, to their life. Mm -hmm. And if there's a rush to get this pickleball court in and then to damage the lake and to take money from here and there, and I could, I could guarantee you, if I give you three pieces of paper, you counsel people, and I give Angela a piece of paper, and I see how much money we got in the bank. I guarantee you, we will not get the same. Mm -hmm. We will not get the same answer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a floating fl thing. And people don't know exactly how much, you know, I mean, we got this project, that project. So it's just way too late in the game to change this with the lake. And to, I'm not saying that you can't do what you want to do inside those tennis courts, basketball courts, racetrack, all that stuff. It's just, you just said, Fred, we could do anything. This is open. This is fluid. We don't know. And it's Bay. You know what I mean? You just said that. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not pointing at you, picking on you. This is what everybody's hearing. We really don't know. You got 25,000, you got 5,000. Well, everybody here would say, go with the 5,000. Make it usable. You know, who's going who's gonna to say go 25,000 and go higher? Yes, we got Tulip Lane going, and you know, we just finished Dunham. Sure. It's it's to me, it's it's a far cry. The lake is a far cry from what it was 40 years ago. It's outdoors. It's nothing but work, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, uh, the, it, if somebody says, "Well, I I volunteered back then," well, I've been there a long time, and if they did, they did they volunteered when it was just getting going. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different now and uh, way too late, way too late in the game to affect the lake this year, in my opinion. Um, people that maybe don't join the lake or don't know the lake, they might say, oh, the lake and the money. $20,000 to do what we do? Volunteers, not a paid person here, but a guard, and it's hard to get guards. Natalie, or Angela, Natalie saying, you know, Parker program people, how do you get uh, people to, to run that thing and to hire people? It's hard. You just said two people didn't show up. You know, for the, I mean, it's hard to get people. Now you got people that go to work all day. You know, some people are lucky enough to be retired. Nevertheless, they got, you know, I ask people to help out and they say, I got my own house to do. I got my own things to do. And, and, and you know, friends, you know, I got my own, well, so do I. <laughs> you know, 20, it's the best investment of all time. Anybody that goes to that lake that's never been there before, my God, we would love to have this. And these are all people. 
that show up in 50 degree weather and 45 degree weather in April and May to do that. And in November and October, and the clam bake that we throw and the steak roast, nobody can match it. Mm -hmm. it uh, please reconsider touching anything having to do with the lake. And if I, I would be mean if I would say, if not, come on down and, and do all that work that we're doing. I don't want your, your council jobs. It's hard. I, would, I wouldn't take your job if you gave it to me. You guys have so much work to do. Look at this, look, look at that survey, look what you put up there. That's a lot of work, mm -hmm. you know, and presenting it. And everything you had to do to present today's presentation mm -hmm. is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I commend you, all of you, but also look at this side. It's late in the game. I just, I don't see the fairness of this. I can understand you want to get something done, and the people do want it. Maybe we are getting a little younger. There's, there's a lot of turnovers of houses in Walton Hills now. There's a lot of new residents. I mean, yeah, you, you guys know the numbers better than me. And Lake provides what they do provide, and it's not just three months, it's six months. I mean, we have Easter all the way up to the clam bake, and then in, when it's snowing, I remember Joe D'Amico and I were shutting down the lake 20 years ago and it was snowing. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, we didn't expect this, but we had to spend the whole day there outdoor shutting down the water and all that, otherwise the toilets blow. Unless you spend a season with us, you don't know what it takes to run the thing. And I'm not criticizing anybody for that. But too late in the game to jump in and to affect the lake. I'd love, I'd love to learn pickleball. I'd love there to be courts there. Mm -hmm. Please look at somehow how to get it done see how the numbers are and the budget. And uh, I didn't know if this was gonna be a discussion or, and don't take anything I say as criticism. I'm just no, trying to not. tell you facts and all that. You know, you guys all know me. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Tom. Uh, anybody, Mr. Harkai. Denny Harkai, Hickory Drive. <clears throat> Um, when it comes to the batting cage area, Rob, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago, new nets were purchased. Is that correct? Or was that three years ago? Two years ago. Is that right? Just two or three, yes. I'd say two from my guess. I'm down there all the time and I watch what happens. And so I think it was two years ago that brand new nets were uh, purchased. And if I'm not mistaken, there's enough nets to make actually two batting cages. Is that correct? There's one net, the nets go across the top and then they drop down off those wires that are there. Then another net can go across the other top and drop down on the other side, which would make two batting cages. Is that correct? I think it is. All right, well, there, you, I don't know how many. I, I, okay. All right, all right. So, so one thing that I would suggest in a case like that, uh, a, a, new, a new pitching machine is a terrific idea, especially if it can be kept outdoors. Part of the problem with the old one was that it was always locked and no one ever got it out. And I don't think it was working anyway, but a new batting uh, pitching machine is a good idea and it might get people using it. I think that if you put up one net, and which is, it sounds like all you need is one net for the batting cages, then, then, first of all, the net's not worn out. It should be in good enough condition, certainly to use for one season. Mm -hmm. And if you have two more left, you'd have enough last, to last for two and even maybe three or four more seasons without spending any more money on nets. Would that be correct? Would that be correct? I, I'm not sure. Okay, I mean, but I, I mean... I don't know how the net goes together right. the top, one whole piece, if we're modifying the net. But to your point, yes, those nets could last us several seasons Okay. All right, all right. So there's a, so so in terms of saving money, there's an opportunity you could put a batting cage together, and not have it cost any money at all. And then as far as as far as the uh, uh, a couple of these uh, suggestions here on this um, uh, recent page that was given out with the budgets, I mean everybody's got different ideas about what they think is the best idea for sure, and not everybody's going to always agree. That's understandable. And right now, all we're doing is having a discussion. Uh, first of all, I agree with everything that Tom said. I think that uh, the lake contract should be left alone. 
uh, and, and if the money was already discussed and the agreement is halfway done since there were, you know, reading, there was one reading on it, mm -hmm. the, the, the contract shouldn't be changed. But that's up to you guys to decide whether you should or shouldn't do that. And that's business between the village and the lake company, which I understand, you know, that has to be worked out in, in that way. But option number two, where, by the way, again, uh, I said the, the condition of the racetrack does not need to be restriped. The fellows that are down there were on their hands and knees, literally filling the tiniest cracks with seal. And that surface is in excellent condition. It was resurfaced in 2017, a value of over, over $9,000 that cost the village nothing because we raised the money uh, from different resources. And I read a report on that in a previous meeting. So. That, that shows that it's possible to raise money from outside sources rather than hunting for it in the village budget, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But th this idea uh, here, item number two, mm -hmm. uh, for $5,200, mm -hmm. to me, what we're looking for, obviously, is recreation opportunities for everybody. Uh, the park is a, it's got a nice playground. You've got the walking path. Uh, you, you've got... Uh, the racetrack, of course, you know what I think of that. Uh, and, and in the meantime, people are interested in sports. They're interested in pickleball. They're interested in tennis, I think. For, for $5,000, rather than taking something that is used for one thing and try to turn it into something that would be used for several things, leave that one thing alone, fix the batting cage, and then take this $5,000 if it's available, First of all, I don't even know that it's really available. Take this $5,000 and improve the area up on top. Now you're taking an area that hasn't been used since I lived in this village. I don't remember people playing tennis, and I've been here 17 years. And you're right. I've looked at that surface, too. It's nice and level. It can be filled. It can be re... There's things that can be done that are economical that would make it suitable at the present time. Tom's right. It's already May. If you want to get something done... And the service department, <laughs> these guys are busy enough. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that myself and other people that are just a little bit on the creative side could easily raise uh, $5,000 to come up with the money to turn that into something. Now you've got a racetrack, now you've got a batting cage, now you've got a playground, you've got a walking path, and in addition to that, for a very reasonable amount of money, you could have pickleball and maybe tennis. That area is big enough for, I think, I could be wrong, I know the measurements, but I think it's big enough to have one tennis court and also two pickleball courts uh, at the same time. And as far as basketball goes, all right, we've got basketball hoops up on top. There's two of them up there. To make those things portable, those bases, when they're full of water, weigh 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure who is gonna be moving those things around back and forth. My opinion, not everyone may agree with me, my opinion is that they should be left there where it is, and perhaps uh, someone could come up with a creative way to set them up so that maybe the kids, the kids are already playing basketball up there. I guess what I'm saying is try to do things that are within our budget that offer the most that we can possibly offer under the circumstances that we have. And, and, and I, know, I know from talking to Mike Cerna that, that I could probably get him to give us a really good price on what it would take to clean that whole area up, paint it up, and make it nice for uh, pickleball and basketball, and I think that's a much better direction to go than uh, uh, of all these different options. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Is, is there any more conversation on? Uh, yes, we did subject? have a comment from Mrs. Velk saying a round of applause for Tom Nowicki's statements with right. several clapping hands. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anything else? Well, um. Um, I will say, Mr. Chair, that the area where the basketball portable hoops are right now is not safe for the kids to be playing on. We've uh -huh. got crumbling parking lot there and a There's lot of a loose gravel. Next door, too. If, if I, I know the Parkers play there sometimes, and. Those are the only ones I've seen. Well, they were, they've been given no other option. Right, yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, do you have anything else to write on that? No, I just... This is, uh, you know, uh, we don't want the lake to, to feel 
that we're out gunning for them or something like that. It's quite the opposite. Uh, we all know the value of the lake. Um, our job is to uh, provide services to the village, uh, recreational opportunities to the village, for uh, and be budget conscious. Um, and so it, uh, and rightfully so. I'm, uh, 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 the conversation came up. Uh, could the lake afford? Um, uh, to uh, uh, not do twenty thousand dollars this year, and that's why we felt we uh, needed to at least ask you to get that conversation going, to see uh, what our plan B, C, or D is going to be. Um, uh, as being, uh, as far as being late in the year, yes, it's, it's. I'm, I'm sure it uh, is late in the year for you guys. Uh, you already got your plans and everything, um, but you don't get if you don't ask either if if uh you know i would have been uh you know if, if we'd have sat there and, and said the conversation came up in the fall well we were going to ask you well why didn't you we would have gladly done so you, you got both sides of that coin um we'll continue to look at at, at our budget and see what um we can do I, I you know i put these cost estimates together based on uh, mr kalman's um research to show us all the options from high to low that doesn't mean we're going to take them obviously but to show us that hey you know we want we want two tennis courts to do it right that's 35 grand okay uh, of course we don't have the uh, i wouldn't vote to spend thirty five thousand uh, dollars to do that uh, but at least we have the information on what all this stuff costs and where we can go from from here mm -hmm. um, as far as being late in the year for us, unfortunately, we're asked to redo the budget probably 20 times a year. So right. um, uh, we just will have to look at it with Angela and uh, see where we are at in the recreation budget itself. And if we can come up with something uh, reasonable uh, for our residents and keeping all, all everything we have and uh, increasing the, the recreational opportunities for everybody. I think uh, so everybody can come out a, a winner and happy, and um, uh, that's about all I have to say on that subject. Does anybody have Mr. anything more? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, Sean, I don't know if you, you know, we weren't coming after the lake for any, you know, saying, oh, we're going to take back, uh, take back money doesn't hurt to ask uh, you gave you came up and you have you gave us a list of the things you want to do this year that's all we needed that was perfect I, you know I mean there was there was really no more to be said than what you did so I uh, and it wasn't about politics it certainly wasn't about politics it had to do with things for the village not for me personally not for him but for the people in this village and for the kids in this village. And we have new people have moved into this village and a lot of them, when I went around door to door talking to them, one of the first things I tell them is we have one of the best things going that other people don't have. Other villages, other cities don't have. We have the Walton Hills Lake. It's been there my whole life growing up. I, I scrubbed those walls, I mowed those lawns, the same as all of you. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the best things anywhere. And I and certainly wouldn't want to see uh, anything happen to it and lose it. All we were looking for was if you didn't need all the money this year and you could possibly help us out with some of this, that's all we were looking at, so. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. We were supposed to have a definitive end time of 7 p.m. and we still need to discuss toilets at the... Okay. Oh. <laughs> On to toilets. I forgot the um, toilets. Rob's not here. He's, his stuff <laughs> is still here, <laughs> though. He'll be back. His go, stuff is go still ahead, here. Go ahead while Rob's... Uh, sure. One last comment, real quick. On, on this option number two, mm -hmm. uh, 
Ms. Allen, you had mentioned that, you know, your son hurt himself playing basketball up there on that court. Mm -hmm. We don't want anybody up there doing anything where they have the risk of getting hurt. Um, another option that I didn't even think of until you mentioned that again, which was not the first time you've mentioned it, mm -hmm. uh, to take that area up on top and do the resurface, clean it up, make it at least presentable at a budget that we can afford, and instead of having two pickleball courts, have one pickleball court, one basketball, uh, uh, temporary basketball area in that place, plenty of room to put that temporary basketball thing up on top where the tennis courts are now, and then one tennis court. So you could take that same area up there and turn it into a multi-purpose thing that would give you tennis, pickleball, and uh, um, a portable um, uh, basketball court. And as far as the, the cost of doing this resurfacing, I did some research on my own with no authorization from the village, but in doing that, I became friends, in a sense, with, uh, with Mike Cerna. When I finished my meeting with him and Stan up there for an hour in his office, I left the man, gave me his homemade sausage and a bottle of wine, and we were like pals, okay? And he offered to do $2,500 worth of work down on that lower area that I presented one time before. He came back and offered to do it for half price. If someone would say, okay, Denny, go talk, to, go talk to Mike, go talk to Stan, and have him look at that and see what it would cost to redo that without having to get our service department involved in it because they got plenty of other stuff to do. Who knows, maybe the guy will give it to us for free. I don't know, but I, I don't think everybody's saying you don't know what you can get if you ask. If someone says, okay, Denny, go talk to Mike Cern and see what you can do, I'll do it tomorrow. Would somebody say that? Well, we, uh, I, the problem is uh, we're a governmental entity, and we can't make, it, it's, you can't make, if he wants to talk to the mayor or to Rob, um, okay. and, and we have to put it out to bid, we can't, because he comes and does it, and then somebody else says, well, wait a minute, you know, so, you know, I had have done it for this, and you didn't give me the opportunity, so that's where we get into, it's hairy with that kind okay. of stuff, we appreciate what you did, and and we'll keep that in mind, and uh, ask ask Mr. Cerner to give us a call, and we'll always take his. I will. I, who should he call? Who should the directors call to? Rob. <laughs> well, then, did you ever talk to him before? <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, and and uh, Rob. Uh, good. Oh, and Would one you be more. Able to, what? I was talking to Mr. Common. I thought you were finished. Hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. We got two minutes, Denny. Okay. okay. <laughs> one, one more thing. Uh, I don't know when you were going to bring this up, but we talked about it via email, and, and the subject was going to come up. The, the, the racetrack does need some things, like some flags to make it look nice, and some paint and some boards. And uh, I had asked uh, Mayor Don uh, if, if he would just let us put it on our credit card and have the village reimburse us, and he didn't answer me. He said he wanted to talk to some people, which I understand. I believe you're one of the people he probably talked to about that. In the yeah, meantime- We haven't had that conversation. All right, well, I didn't know for sure who he was gonna talk to. In the meantime, there are some things that we need to do, and myself and the group of guys are willing to do it for free, and we'll take care of it. And we need some flags, we need some paint, we need some boards, mm -hmm. and we'll just take care of it on our own, and we're not looking for any thank you, any praise, any accolades, nothing else. We're just doing it because we like it, and that's our way of contributing. So if somebody says, okay, Denny, go ahead, We'll get started because we'd like to start putting it together. It is already May, as has mm -hmm. been discussed. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Huh? We'll no, meeting. we're done. Uh, okay. I think. Thank you. Uh, we'll Rob, talk about the bathroom. Rob, we need yeah, you in one, one minute one to minute. explain okay. everything about the bathrooms at the park. And could, Rob, could you come up to the people couldn't hear you? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Hurry up, you got, it's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, what do we need to know about the bathrooms? Uh, bathrooms, uh, schedules of opening and closing and why they are closed and if there's um, up at TG on the park. Well, you get it all. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, if there's anything we can possibly do to extend uh, the season uh, of the bathrooms being open somehow. Um, or make the opening of them on weekends easier. 
Um, well, the thing is, and I'll answer this for Rob, and you can feel free to correct me. I'm if doing I'm good wrong. so far. I haven't yeah. said a word. So um, keep going. The problem is with our <laughs> weather, you you open them on a weekend. That means you have to put the water on, and then when you close them, you have to actually take the water off. Correct. No, the water's right. only on and off for the season. Correct. The water's only on and off for the season. Right. It's right. on for the season for the winter season they shut the water off right but I'm saying in the summer normally they're open Monday through Friday now because of the Parker program but what happens on the weekends they should be open they're still open yeah they should be open as far as I'm aware they're open aren't they, they are go not, ahead Rob they have not been open. They are not, they have not been open. on the weekends in the Absolutely summer not. well they're not open you, you haven't not. opened them up yet have you, you have no them? they're not open yeah. go ahead Rob <laughs> <laughs> All right, so coming from a service department guy, this is what I would do. Associate hours of operation with the park. Then make sure bathrooms are open during those hours of operations. Because you have a recreation department of two, I would recommend the police open them during the hours of operation. Bam, done. Okay, now what we have though is when does the season start? That's, that's I would recommend season. not only assign hours of operation like like dawn till dusk, I would say we're open April 15th to November 1st. Don't we do that now? No, I, I, I'm not part we of the rec department, no. <laughs> we generally, I've been here, yeah. I've, the times I've, you know, for the length of time I've been here, they usually open up before uh, Labor Day or Memorial Day, whichever one comes first. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, typically we like to turn the water on, make sure everything's working around April 15th yeah. is when, we, when, when we, we turn it on. As far as it being open... I, I would just assign times and days. I, you know, again, I, I, and I've heard from other residents that they, you know they they go up there and the the bathrooms aren't open, and I just I kind of stay in my lane and I figure it's part of recreation or somebody else. And Do you have a problem with us opening them April fifth? Of course, it's April. Yeah, yeah no, April I April fifteenth with with a cold snap and any water freezing pipes in there at all. Because if you don't have any, if, if you can't see from a, a service department perspective that that would happen, right. we'll just open them early next year and we'll, uh, we'll open them up April 15th and do what you said. Is and it, I've talked to uh, the chief and the mayor and see if we can just have, the, have a police officer go down there and open them up and then close them up. Right. It, it, it's, I, I don't know. This is, it, since, since I've been here for some reason, it, it's been a s sequencing thing with you know depending on when the police come on shift and and you know whatever and then if they if they were assigned that I think it becomes lax during the summer months when you got parkers and then sometimes things fall through the cracks but um, best way to do it is assign it to somebody okay we'll All get right. it done. Uh, mr. chairman I think we should also have some definitive hours then too besides just dusk till dawn because I'm not going up it that that's kind of generic if we're going to be open for a, a finite period of time from April 15th to, say, November 1st, we could say from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 6 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. In, in the summer months. Isn't there, like, a rule of law or anything? Mm -hmm. There's no laws for government, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you got to come up, Jeff. So then we're done. Hold on. Right? Yep. Yeah, you're done. I got a sidebar. Jeff Alexander, Walton Road. Um, I rented the pavilion at Young Park for a graduation party, yep. and the mayor came and had to open up the bathrooms. Oh, well, I talked to him previously. He said, he didn't know how they do get open. We'll, and, um, 
We'll get it done. Okay. Yeah, but because that was a, a rental on a Saturday, who do, who's going to open it? And then when I went back to get some um, material, I saw one of the officers was locking the gates. So okay. if they can lock the gate, they surely could open the bathrooms. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll get it done right, We'll, we'll get it done for everybody. Yeah, Jennifer. Okay, I have a comment on here from Ms. Fitznagel saying, who will clean and stock the restrooms when open? Yeah, there... I, um, I excuse me, I was just going to mention something like that. Keeping the bathrooms open is going to present some challenges that no one will question. Number one, you, you will run into security issues, I guarantee it. We've already known of some things that have happened up there that... Um, we're not exactly desirable, if you will. Vandalism, if you want to use that general term, okay? So we will run into security issues by keeping the toilets open all the time when the park is open. Number two, you're going to run into situations where you're going to have to continuously do supplies and cleaning. I don't know who's going to be in charge of that, but if you're going to keep them open, somebody's going to have to take care of them. Otherwise, you're going to run out of supplies, and they're not going to be clean. In the meantime... If you decide to keep them open and somebody can keep them supplied and you're not worried about security, there are locks available that will open and close a lock automatically by a timer that aren't very expensive and that would eliminate the policeman from having to run up there opening and closing it. Those guys got enough to do without uh, opening and closing locks on toilets. <laughs> Same mm -hmm. thing goes at a, a service department. And in the meantime, until we figure out what to do with this, for $40, for $40, a one-time delivery fee, someone could put a portable toilet right up there at the top, and for $200 a month, they'll keep it clean, and they'll keep it uh, maintained once a month, uh, once a week, I'm sorry, for $200 a month. Perhaps, if you want to have people have access to facilities, that's a good temporary uh, fix in the meantime. A $40 one-time delivery fee and $200 a month to keep it clean and uh, supplied. We did have a... Um, and I didn't shop around. Maybe there's better prices. That's one price that I got on my own. Um, we did have... Uh, it was just a suggestion from Natalie, and this is you're probably getting more into the administration part to figure out uh, between uh, the mayor and, and the rec director. Uh, she did say... Um, that they don't need the cleaning lady in the community center uh, three times per week. Um, let's see. We just need her to come in after each event, yoga, scenery, lunch, mayor's morning meeting, uh, et cetera, starting in May to clean and restock the restrooms. Uh, oh, so I'm sorry. We could send her to the park starting in May to clean and restock the restrooms two in the pavilion and two in the concession building once a week on Monday mornings after the weekend through the end of September. So there, there is an idea, I don't know, but uh, they can uh, uh, try to figure that out. Anybody else have anything to say? Uh, we'll, we'll get with the mayor and the rec director and and figure that out, but we'll get the we'll get the restrooms open. Uh, uh, I was unaware that they were not open during the weekends. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I would say that I do like the idea of automatic locks as opposed to over twenty four hundred dollars for a porta potty to be sitting in our park. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, I you could come and clean it. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, does anybody have anything else to say about that? We'll get on it, and uh, we'll let you know what, we, uh, what, what uh, the administration came up with. But it, it should be an easy fix. Um, you can clean the restrooms. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you do everything else around yeah. here. <laughs> um, does any resident have anything else to say about the agenda items or, or what we discussed or anything else? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. I'd like to make a motion for adjournment. Second. Uh, vote on the motion, Ms. Uh, Ms. Allen. Yes. Mr. Nielsen. Yes. And me, yes. Uh, meeting adjourned at 7.10 p.m. Uh, and uh, I have to end this stream.
and start a new stream for the or information meeting. All right, so recreation meeting ends at 7.10 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Lake Club uh, trustees. I appreciate your input and everybody else. Um, I did tell Carl Eaton that he would be able to email anybody for yeah. presentation because oh, I explained to him that the camera is fixed. Really? Oh, it's not bright. Oh, no, see? Oh, it's like too bright. Yeah. I mix, I mix, I But maybe, you know, but there's something that you can I don't do know to how to do that. Turn down the low and the sets. All I needed to hear was right. Sean has the money allocated. I'm going that's to that's, that's done. It was, there's no, there was no more to it than that. I mean, why was it? Well, I don't <laughs> Wake think up. What the big well, 